so you want to read more. It's the new year, Goodreads and Storygraph have their reading challenges out. You're probably thinking to yourself, this is the year I'm gonna meet my reading goals. Well, today I'm here to tell you how you can read more in two simple steps and a few different tips and tricks. Now you're probably thinking, who is this random person on youtube.com who thinks that she can tell me how to live my life? Well. You're probably right, I don't know you, I don't know your brain, but what I do hope is that you can take away from this video at least something, a tip, a trick, a step perhaps on how you can read more this year. I'm just someone who's here to help you live your best life, to live your best reading life. Also by trade, I'm an occupational therapist and it's kind of literally my day job to help people figure this stuff out. So step one is gonna sound really simple <laughs> and it's gonna sound really patronizing and I don't intend it to be that way but it is figure out what's getting in the way of your reading is it time is it concentration is it motivation if you can figure out what is getting in the way of your reading it's going to be so much easier for you to figure out what it's going to actually take to read more or to read as much as you want to read and even if you only spend one day reading if it's one day more than you were going to read I'm going to call that a win for you and for me out of those three things that I've just listed, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how you might be able to read more. These aren't gonna work for everyone. They may not work for you. Some may work for you at some times and they may not work at other times. Again, I don't know you, I don't know your brain. If I don't cover what is your issue with reading in this video, leave me a comment. I'll do my best to problem solve with you down there, but I can only cover so much in one day. So if your problem is time. My first tip is to make time for reading. And you're probably sitting there being like Michaela, if I just could make time to read, I wouldn't be here. But bear with me. I think what people mean when they say you need to make time for reading is that they actually want you to prioritize reading. I want you to prioritize reading. That generally means shuffling and moving other priorities around so that you're able to make that an important task for you to complete. But is there perhaps other things that maybe you're spending your time doing that you could replace with reading? Are you spending copious amounts of time sitting at your computer scrolling through YouTube? Are you perhaps sitting at your desk at lunchtime at work working instead of enjoying your lunch? You could be reading. It doesn't have to be a significant amount of time. It could just be 20 minutes here or there. But if that's 20 minutes a day that you are reading, that you weren't reading before, that's over an hour a week that you've gained just in reading time. So it doesn't have to be huge. Just shuffle your priorities a bit. Which leads me to tip number two, which is use your travel time for reading. I'm gonna assume that you're a person who either works or goes to school or has to commute in this post-pandemic world to the place of occupation that you exist in. One of the best things for reading more is to use the time that you are traveling for reading. If you take public transport, take a book with you or download an ebook on your phone because like if you're not reading what are the chances that you're actually sitting there just staring at your phone anyway if you drive perhaps listen to an audiobook while you drive your travel time is time that you are going to be doing anyway you may as well make it productive and read at the same time tip number three is to socially read now this one's gonna sound weird but Again, bear with me. If you have people who love you for you, or if you have people who also really enjoy reading, schedule time together to just read together. You don't have to read the same thing. You don't have to talk to each other. Just schedule some time to sit down together and read. You get the bonus of your socializing, but also you get to have a shared experience with someone else that is quite unlike any other shared experience with other people, in my opinion. Two birds, one stone. Tip number four I have already alluded to and it is to listen to audiobooks. I will harp on about this until the day I die. Audiobooks are the single most effective way that you can increase how much you read. You will never get me off of my audiobook bandwagon. I'm here to stay. Like I said, pop it on in the car while commuting to work. Pop it on some headphones while you're doing the dishes or the vacuuming or any of your other household chores. Literally half of the books that I read last year were audiobooks that I listened to. And that is simply because I work full time and I do YouTube on the side. So my time to actually sit down and dedicate to reading is nowhere near what it used to be. So listening to audiobooks has been how I have adapted my reading and the way that I ingest stories and writing and has literally changed my life. Now I will say the paid audiobook sites are a bit pricey. I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. However, the day I discovered that you could borrow audiobooks from online libraries. My life changed in a way that I genuinely classify as a significant event in my timeline. Look into it, see if you can get it. It has genuinely saved me hundreds of dollars. Like I said, won't be the last time you hear me say it, but listen to audiobooks. Now, if you think, Michaela, none of these strategies are helping me. I already prioritize reading. I already make time to read and I still feel like I just can't 
read as much as I want to. Perhaps your difficulty may be concentration. For this, my tips are to one, set a timer. Again, sounds super basic, but what this does is that it breaks the task up so that your brain does not feel like it's such a big task. If you set yourself a page limit, that could go on for an indefinite amount of time if your brain wanders to other things. So set a timer, not a page limit. One thing that I have found supremely helpful is the Pomodoro method. There are, again, hundreds of videos on YouTube, but the basic explanation of this is breaking up a period of time that you have allocated, perhaps if you have prioritized some time, into smaller chunks, usually into something that's roughly 25 minutes on and five minutes off, or 40 minutes on, 10 minutes off. You can make it what you want. There are no rules here, but set a timer. And usually the YouTube videos have like really lovely lo-fi music and aesthetic pictures that accompany it. And the bonus for this is that I put it on my phone. And so when I'm reading and the Pomodoro lo-fi timer is there in front of me, I physically cannot use my phone in that time. Tip number two is to have a tiny notebook next to you. Hang on. Have a tiny notebook next to you. This is to write down any errant thoughts or tasks or opinions while you are reading. How many times have you been trying to read and then you remember, oh my gosh, I have that thing that I need to do. And then you go and do the thing and then you aren't reading. I've been using a tiny notebook, not just for reading, but I think this is something that has helped my reading so much is to have a spot that is not my phone to write stuff down in. The reason I say don't use a phone for this is because phones are naturally incredibly distracting. Apps and notifications are designed for that reason. Companies want you to spend time on their apps. So we don't give them the satisfaction, we use a tiny notebook. Tip number three, I have already talked about it on this channel before when I've done a video like this in the past, but it is to set up your environment for success. What I mean by this is to make sure that your environment is not gonna be distracting and that it is gonna be comfortable and that you want to spend time in it. I'm gonna put my OT hat on for a second. I want you to consider your sensory preferences for this. And I want you to think about using your five, there's eight, but your five senses to think about what in your environment you can change to best suit your sensory preferences. Are you someone that gets really distracted by so much clutter and visual stimuli in front of you? Are you someone that perhaps requires music or requires no noise to be able to sit down and concentrate and read? You could light a candle to make it more ambient, get the aromas going, you know? Set up your environment, think about what it's gonna take for you to make that environment less distracting and more enticing for you to spend time there. Tip number four, again, listen to audiobooks. I told you to come back, but specifically listen to audiobooks either while you're doing something else that's menial like playing Bejeweled on your phone or Candy Crush or while reading the book at the same time if you are lucky enough to have a physical copy of that book too. Again we're playing on the sensory preferences if you can reduce the amount of senses that will be distracted by other stimuli you have more chance of reading. It's basically maths. Listen to audiobooks. I swear I'll stop now. And my fifth and final tip for concentration specifically is body doubling. This is something that's really popular in the neurodivergent ADHD, ASD community. The premise of this is literally just to do an activity with someone else there. You don't necessarily have to interact with that person. It's kind of the same as a socializing one, but just with less pressure. I think. That person doesn't also have to be reading. They can be doing whatever else they want to be doing. However, we are delving scarily close to the motivation section of tips and tricks. I know I've spoken about these before. I'm gonna do it in rapid fire so we're not here for an hour talking about this. Read something that you've already read. Break the slump, feel the feels. It's gonna be so much easier for you to face something that you know what's coming than face the anxiety of not knowing what's gonna happen. Number two is read something short. We love a short book to build the motivation. You could perhaps try this book or this book or this book but not this one, the first one. Don't go jumping into an 800 page three book series that is dense in its fantasy roots. That is not going to bring you out of a slump. And if it is, please share with me a wizardry. How do you do that? As an aside for this tip, also consider reading a graphic novel. They have pictures, they have less words and they're short and they're quick. Graphic novels are great for reading slumps. The way that we build motivation is to start with the easiest task first and then progressively get harder from there because you wanna build that success train in your brain and then let it choo-choo itself out of the station to continue reading for the rest of the year. Tip three is read a mystery or a thriller. They're fast paced and they trigger that natural human curiosity in the brain that needs to know what happens and has this need for closure. Plus the bonus of this is that the cozy subgenre of the genres has been making an appearance lately, which means that if you're not super into like the whole gory mystery type stuff, cozy mysteries, cozy thrillers are a thing now. Maybe seek some of those out. There's something in the genre for everyone. And tip number four is to do a buddy read. I've ranted and raved about buddy reads for years on this channel. Hi, my name is Michaela. I love buddy reading because what better way to have a shared experience with another human being than to read the same book 
at the same time, experience those stories differently because you're different people and then come together and reflect on how those things are different and how you had different opinions on those things. It is truly one of the best things that I have found about the reading community and this here channel. So consider a buddy read. Not only does it bring motivation, but it also, again, has someone else hold the accountability for you. So you don't have to hold all that motivation on the inside. Someone else holds it for you to an extent, unless you and your friend do a buddy read and then neither of you actually really like the book and then you never really finish the buddy read, you never make it past 200 pages because the book is so dense and you never really speak about it again. Now you're probably wondering, Michaela, you said there was two steps and many tips and tricks. So what is step two? <laughs> because so far I've only told you one and it's actually just to completely disregard your goals, which I know sounds counterproductive, but again, bear with me. My reasoning for this is because oftentimes when we place a number or an expectation on ourselves to do something, it actually makes that thing harder because it becomes so much bigger. It becomes an expectation. It becomes a thing that we have to do, a job that we have to achieve. And that's just not the vibe I want to bring to reading in 2024. You might be someone who works really well with expectation and pressure and deadlines. And if you are, that's all well and good. I hope that you can take some of the other tips and tricks in this video and apply them to help you better that for yourself. But I know that for myself, when I set those expectations or I put those pressures on, it makes it so much harder to actually do the thing. If you feel like you're trying to force yourself to read more or you're not enjoying yourself when you're reading, maybe consider just lowering your expectations of yourself a little bit. It doesn't even have to be for the whole year if you're so dedicated to your reading goal or trying to hit a certain number, you do you boo, that's fine. But you don't have to do that all the time and you can just lower your expectations of yourself even for a little bit to get through a rough period. You can't expect your brain to have a good day every day. That's literally impossible. So it's okay to slow down and give your brain a break and give yourself a break and maybe do something else for a while. Disregard your reading goals is step number two, formally. Remember, there are no rules here. You need to do what you need to do to take care of your brain, prioritize yourself. The world is hard enough without putting unrealistic and unnecessary goals on your reading. And so those are my two steps and many other tips on how you can read more in 2024. Again, if you find yourself at step one, figuring out what your conundrum with reading is and it's not listed in this video, let me know. Chuck a comment down below. We can problem solve that together because it's very likely that I have the same issue and just haven't realized it yet. Really, you'd be helping us both out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a fantastic day or night or whatever time it is where you are in the world and I will see you hopefully next week. Goodbye. Thank you.